Today, we're going to explore the topic that I'm sure will resonate with most of us. My message is entitled, Finding Peace in Times of Urgent Need. Finding Peace in Times of Urgent Need. We all face moments of crisis when we fervently seek God's guidance. Yet sometimes it feels as though our prayers are hitting the ceiling or encountering a roadblock. In these times of desperation, it is crucial to find peace and direction. Our primary scripture today is Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 from the New King James Version. There Paul writes, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What a powerful passage. Now, this passage not only calls us to trust in God's abundant provision, but also offers profound wisdom for finding peace amid our trials and times of need. Let's delve deeper into this passage and uncover how we can apply its truths to our lives. Paul begins by telling us not to be anxious about anything. He says, be anxious for nothing. This instruction is a call to trust God completely, recognizing that our own understanding and efforts are limited. Anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. Anxiety often stems from feeling out of control. But Paul directs us to place our worries in God's hands. Trusting in God requires us to acknowledge our limitations and accept his infinite wisdom and power. Consider the story of a businessman named Stephen who faced a severe financial crisis. Despite his efforts and his knowledge, Stephen couldn't find a way out. Finally, he admitted his inability to solve the problem and he earnestly sought God's guidance. Soon after, a former colleague reached out to him with a business opportunity that resolved his financial issues. By acknowledging his dependence on God, Steve released the stress of solving the problem alone, and he opened the door for divine intervention. Reflecting on such moments in our own lives can help us see how God's wisdom and power can bring about changes to our situations and our perspectives. The Apostle Paul instructs us to bring every situation to God in prayer and supplication. Now, prayer encompasses all of our communication with God, while supplication refers to specific requests. So this combination of prayer, which is general, and supplication, with, which is specific, shows that we should maintain a continual dialogue with God bringing both our general concerns and our specific needs to him at all times. The act of supplication, which is earnestly presenting petitions to God, demonstrates our reliance on him and our trust in his ability to intervene in our lives. Additionally, prayer and supplication must be brought to God with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving shifts our focus from our problems to God's faithfulness, creating an attitude of trust and dependence on him. Thanksgiving in prayer involves recognizing and acknowledging God's past actions, which reinforces our trust in his ongoing faithfulness. When we thank God in our prayers, we affirm that he is in control and that he has already provided for our needs in the past. The practice of thanksgiving cultivates a heart of gratitude 
and shifts our perspective from our immediate problems to God's eternal goodness. Let's reflect a bit on Philippians 4, 7, which says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God is the outcome of presenting our request to him with thanksgiving. This peace is not something that we can manufacture on our own. This peace is a divine gift that transcends human understanding. It is a peace that protects our hearts and minds from the turmoil and anxiety that can so easily overwhelm us. The peace of God is not dependent on our circumstances, but on our relationship with Christ. Peace does not depend on the absence of trouble, but on the presence of God. It remains steadfast even when everything around us is in chaos. When we trust in the security we find in Jesus, our Savior, we actively protect ourselves from anxiety and fear. To demonstrate the impact of obeying Philippians 4, 6 and 7 concerning prayer and thanksgiving, consider this example. I'll call uh, this mother Susan. So Susan is a mother who's overwhelmed with the demands of caring for her sick child. She felt she had no time for herself or for God. One night, Susan decided to spend a few minutes in silence, praying and listening to God in the midst of this silent time. In that stillness, she began to thank God for his presence and his strength. She expressed gratitude for the little blessings in her day, even amid the chaos. This act of thanksgiving shifted her focus from her problems to God's faithfulness. As she continued in prayer with thanksgiving, she felt a profound sense of peace. Her situation didn't change immediately, but her perspective and strength to face it did. A heartfelt prayer of thanksgiving is more than just a simple expression of gratitude. It is a powerful practice that transforms our outlook. When we thank God, even in difficult times, we acknowledge his sovereignty and goodness. Thanksgiving reinforces our trust in God and reminds us of his past faithfulness. It shifts our focus from our immediate problems to the eternal nature of God's love and provision. By instructing us to include thanksgiving in our prayers, Paul is teaching us to remember God's faithfulness and to trust in his continued provision. This practice not only brings us peace, but also strengthens our faith and reliance on God. It helps us to see beyond our current struggles and recognize the bigger picture of God's work in our lives. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, is a gift from the Holy Spirit. It can guard our hearts and minds, even in the most chaotic circumstances. When we rely on the Spirit, we can experience this peace, providing us with calm and assurance, even in the midst of turmoil. Consider a man named Mark, diagnosed with a serious illness, who found himself unable to pray for healing due to fear and uncertainty. One night, while meditating on Romans 8, 26 and 27, Mark simply asked the Holy Spirit to intercede for him. He began to pray silently in tongues for about 20 minutes. After it, he felt a profound sense of peace and assurance that God was in control. This newfound peace gave him the strength and hope to face each day with renewed courage. And quite surprisingly, he also discovered that his recovery began to speed up. 
The peace that the Holy Spirit brings is beyond human understanding, and it can sustain us through the darkest times. The peace of God guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, meaning that our inner beings are protected from turmoil and distress through our relationship with Christ. This divine peace acts as a shield, preventing the worries of the world from overwhelming us. It serves as a constant reminder of God's presence and sovereignty in our lives. Often we experience this peace through the support of our faith community. Fellow believers can provide encouragement, prayer, practical help, reinforcing the sense of peace that comes from knowing we're not alone in our struggles. In moments of doubt or anxiety, the collective faith and love of our community can help us feel secure and cared for. A young couple facing marital difficulties recently reached out to their church community for support. Through counseling, prayer groups, and the encouragement of their friends, they found the strength to work through their issues. The love and support of their faith community played a crucial role in healing their marriage. Our faith community is vital in helping us find peace and strength during challenging times. Reflecting on God's past faithfulness can further reinforce the peace we experience in our current situations. When we remember how God has worked in our lives before, it builds our faith and trust in his continued provision. An elderly woman reflecting on her long life often faced challenges that seemed insurmountable. She kept a journal of God's past interventions and miracles in her life. During each new trial, she would read through her journal, reminding herself of God's faithfulness. This practice helped her maintain faith and peace in the face of adversity. Keeping a record of God's faithfulness can be a powerful tool to bolster our faith during difficult times. Another way to maintain peace is by trusting in God's timing. Even when his timing doesn't align with our urgent needs, he's always working for our good. This trust means believing that God's plans and timing are perfect, even when we don't understand them. A man waiting for a job opportunity found himself frustrated with repeated rejections. However, he continued to trust in God. Eventually, he was offered a position that was far better than he could have imagined. Looking back, he realized that the waiting period was necessary for him to develop the skills and the character needed for his new role. His story illustrates the importance of trusting God's perfect timing, even when we face uncertainty. I would now like to give you several practical steps to seek God's guidance. These steps will help you create an environment conducive to hearing from God and experiencing his peace. Number one, create a conducive environment for prayer and reflection. If you find yourself overwhelmed with responsibilities, try spending 10 minutes each morning in quiet reflection and prayer before starting your day. This habit can greatly enhance your spiritual life. Number two, incorporate moments of quiet reflection into your daily routine. Use verses that speak to your situation and declare God's promises over your life. For example, if you're facing anxiety, you might find comfort in reading Psalm 23 aloud every night, reminding yourself the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Number three, write down your thoughts and prayers. Writing down your thoughts and prayers can help clarify your feelings and bring focus. If you're struggling with depression or anxiety, journaling your prayers can help 
you process your emotions and recognize God's answers over time. Number four, practice fasting to draw near to God and seek his guidance. Fasting is a powerful way to deepen your relationship with God and seek clarity in your circumstances. Consider fasting and praying for a specific period to seek God's direction in a particular area of your life. Number five, partner with a prayer group or a trusted friend to pray for specific needs. Praying with others can provide immense strength and peace. If you're going through a difficult time, ask your small group or a trusted friend to pray with you regularly. Their collective prayers can provide support and encouragement. In moments of urgent need, when you seem to be at your wit's end, it's crucial to remember that God is always with you. By relying on his word, the Holy Spirit, and the support of your faith community, you can find peace and guidance, even in the most difficult situations. Let us trust in God's unfailing love and his perfect plan for our lives. Paul's exhortation to be anxious for nothing might seem like a tall order, especially when we are facing serious challenges. But he doesn't just leave us with the command, he provides a way to achieve it. He tells us to bring everything to God in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. This isn't just about presenting our requests as a laundry list. It's about developing a relationship with God characterized by trust and gratitude. Through consistent prayer and heartfelt supplication, we learn to depend on him more deeply. This practice helps shift our focus from our anxieties to God's unwavering faithfulness, fostering a peace that guards our hearts and minds, even in the most difficult and desperate times. As we conclude, let's remember that finding peace in times of urgent need requires more than just discovering a formula or following a set of actions. It requires a heart fully surrendered to God's will and complete trust in him, even when we don't see immediate answer. Let's continue to seek his presence daily, lean on our faith community, and embrace the peace that only he can provide. Now, dear friends, as we conclude our time together, I want to extend an invitation to those who desire to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. If you haven't yet made this decision, or if you feel a renewed call to rededicate your life to him, I invite you to pray with me now. Dear God, I come to you now and ask for forgiveness of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for me on the cross, and that he rose from the dead. Jesus, I confess your Lordship and ask you now to become my Savior. Help me to experience your peace during times of urgent need and to receive divine strength at all times. Amen. Now, if you sincerely prayed that prayer, Welcome to the family of God. We rejoice with you and encourage you to connect with us. Visit our website at westa.org or send us an email at hello at westa.org. You can also reach us by phone using the number that's on your screen. We're here to support you in your new journey of faith. Thank you for joining us today. May God's peace which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I'm Dr. Wilfred Graves, Jr. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.